I am Jody Han, Mrs. Han Painted. Thanks for checking out my video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint another fun Mother's Day card design. This one is just really simple. Mom in some metallic gold. Look at that shine. And using some simple little floral accents that you can add. And you can really customize this with anybody's name if you wanted to. I'll also show you a little trick I did. So how I can do fancy lettering without having to be really skilled and talented at doing freehand brush lettering. I'll show you a little hack I use with using computer, computer font and how you can transfer that over onto a uh, paper. And I am going to be using a light pad in this, but if you don't have a fancy light pad, you can do it on a sunny window. I just happen to use a light pad all the time because as you can see, it's dark outside and there's no sun right now because most of my painting happens after my kids are in bed. So I am happy you came to check out my video and I hope you enjoy painting along with me. Right, supplies I'll be using today for this particular card are these Strathmore watercolor cards and I bought a big box of 50 of them so I can make lots of different cards to send out and I'm gonna do another Mother's Day themed card I printed off um, a font that I liked um, it's called Beyond La La I tend to use this one alike it's something I found for free online um, if you're gonna sell items made with this you may want to check with the licensing requirements because they may not let you sell commercial items with that font unless you pay for a license so if anything just a rule of thumb to follow if you're going to be making something with a particular font i'm not sure how that goes when you're painting it but i just want to use this as my guide and i'm going to just uh, uh, trace that with my light pad so that i have some really pretty brush lettering because uh, I am not that great at lettering. I still need to do a lot more practicing before I could do that free-handed. So I'm going to use my light pad. I bought an LED light pad off Amazon for about 15 bucks. This is actually my second one. I had to replace my other one because my kids uh, messed with the charging cable and bent the inside of it. So uh, word of caution to not leave anything within an 18 month old's reach. And I, I guess I didn't get that put away as well as I should have. So I'm just going to plug that in. And now I've learned my lesson. I keep it up on my desk and I don't leave the cord in it so that it doesn't get bent. So luckily it wasn't a very expensive item. Um, I do have to turn my overhead lights off just so I can see. And I'm going to put that underneath my card. And I'm going to use a water-soluble graphite pencil to just trace over that. And I'm going to be making like a floral design around the letters. And then I'll do my letters in uh, that art philosophy metallic accent. So I'm going to do some gold and then I'll do some flowers to accent this. And this is just my little trick for cheating at brush lettering because like I said, I need to practice a lot more before I get really good at doing this free-handed. I think I have fairly good cursive handwriting, but brush lettering is just a whole different monster in my opinion. With all of the different pressures you need to do and just finding the right markers or pens that you really like to use and definitely doing it with paint brushes is even more challenging because of needing to reload your brush all the time. So that is why I decided to just use fonts from my computer to trace and if you watch any of my other videos I talk about this a lot of times this is just kind of my go-to way of putting a font on a page all right all done tracing that this away okay and I just used a my lights back on sorry Uh, this is a water-soluble graphite pencil from Faber-Castell, and I use the HB hardness because that will give me the lightest line that won't show through. And I'm going to use a Princeton Velvet Touch Round 4 brush, and I'm going to start out by doing my flowers around the name Mom first, and then I'll go back and go around because the gold will show through if I try to paint on top of it. So I don't want that. I want my flowers to be in front. And I am going to do, I think, some purple and some pink flowers just kind of around the side here. Maybe put some on this corner and this corner of mom, and then I'll fill in mom. So 
So really simple little flowers. I had some of this Carbazole Violet that I had mixed with Bordeaux, I think that was from uh, what I painted earlier today. Just going to kind of go with that again. I makes kind of a really pretty red violet color. And I think I'll do kind of a rose. do one on this side as well. I'm just kind of overlapping just barely going over the letters. And I'm going to use that same Bordeaux. Kind of a really pretty red violet magenta color. I really like it. And these are kind of an imaginary flower I'm doing. I'm going to call them my squiggle flowers. Where I literally just squiggle my brush, make a little squiggly circle with the little center. And I'm doing odd numbers. Uh, so I wanted to do five here. Um, I like to do things in groupings of odd numbers. I feel it's more pleasing to the eye. It's kind of something I learned with scrapbooking is if you put items like stickers or embellishments or something on your page, it seems weird if you have an even amount, but if you do it in thirds or, or in five, it always uh, seems to be more pleasing to the eye. Um, I'm not sure what the actual term is for that, but uh, generally doing rule of thirds I think or something like that so I like to do it on odd numbers so I think that looks nice I don't want it to be completely even um, that's just my personal opinion you could do as many flowers or as few as you wanted um, if you just want to do a couple or do a whole mess of them all around there whatever you decide to do um, now that that's drying a little bit I'm just gonna go over my rose with that same purple and just do a little bit more for a little more detail but just doing the really simple little loose roses. And this is something, there's a lot of tutorials on how to do roses out there. So I would check one out and practice, practice, practice. Um, really, you're starting in the center and working your way out and kind of overlapping the petals. And my little blobby flower, I'm just going to add a little bit more. My squiggly blobby flower, I don't know. Okay, now I'm going to add some leaves. I think I'm going with gold here, so I want to do kind of a, a little bit of a darker green. So I'm going to use my undersea green. I really like that color. I'm still using my round four for this entire painting. If you want to use smaller flower to do, or a smaller uh, brush to make smaller leaves, use whatever you have. All right. I'm going to do a little leaf coming out of here. Maybe a little leaf coming this way. And there I went and did it again. Oh, how many of my videos have you guys seen me screw up by letting paint bleed, especially when I'm doing leaves, because I do not wait for it to dry. So learn from my mistakes, people. All right, I'm going to have to lift a little bit of that green out of there. Okay, I think I like that. All right, now to fix that mistake. Here's a great little lesson on how to get this. Yeah, this green that bled into my pink. So I'm getting clean water on my brush. I'm wiping that off on my towel. And I'm just going to lift that up and then wipe that on my towel to get that green off of there. Maybe to clean your brush.
brush off again if you get a lot of pigment off of there. Okay. And I can go back with a tiny bit of that pink. Okay, and then I am going to do one more layer on top of those little pink. I'm going to take that same purple that I mixed up and I'm going to make some little dots in the center of it, but I'll wait for that to dry. And then in the meantime, I'm going to do my name Mom. So using these are Philosophy by Prima Metallic Accents, and I'm going to use, I think I'll try out this second gold. I haven't actually, I think... There's a little bit of brush mark in there. I haven't really used it much. I think that any of these really would be pretty. Um, I just I'm gonna try out the gold. You could change up the colors on this too, and if you wanted to try different metallics, that would be really pretty too. All right, with these metallic accents, they're not a true watercolor. I think they're more of a gouache because they are slightly more opaque. So keeping that in mind, knowing that this is not going to be super transparent, and that is why I'm doing my flowers first, because I don't want any overlap. And then I can go around. I'm going to see what this looks like and see if that's too yellow, maybe. Hmm. I don't hate it. All right, I think I want to do that little bit darker yellow gold. So I'll try that. That's just a little bit too light. I'm just using the heck out of this one color here. So it might be a little discolored because I'm mixing too, but we'll see how it ends up. Might go back over that section just to get that color the way I want it. Now, in case you're wondering, can I buy replacement pans for this? No, you can't. I actually emailed Art Philosophy earlier this week after I had been working on um, my newest Skillshare class. If you want to check that out on my Skillshare, uh, I am on there and I taught a class, a very long class, on doing monograms with cherry blossom accents. And I used this gold paint from this metallic accent set for almost all the paintings. So I'm using a lot of this one color of gold and I asked if I can buy a replacement pan for it and they said they don't have them right now. So unfortunately you cannot buy single colors and this set I believe is about $20 I think, 15 to $20 for this. I can't remember what I paid for it because I bought it at a local scrapbook store a while ago when I first started learning how to do watercolor. And I was mostly using it for, you know, coloring and stamped images and for card making like that. So I didn't use it a whole lot at the time. And so I don't really want to have to buy a whole new set just for one color. Because these other ones I barely used. I just seem to want to use the gold for everything. I did order... Um, Sorry, I'm just chatting away here while I'm painting. I hope you don't mind. I uh, I ordered some Winsor & Newton Artist Goo Wash in just gold. I ordered that a little while ago, but, you know, with all the COVID-19 stuff, all the shipping on everything is taking longer than usual, so I haven't gotten those yet. I ordered some other watercolors as well, just to fill in some of my pans that are getting low on colors I use a lot, so luckily not running out anytime soon, but wanted to be prepared. I'm just trying to get a nice even coverage here, and I'm going around very carefully around my flowers that I painted. Um, another suggestion, if you don't have gold, metallic, paint like this is if you have um, a gold paint pen or if you don't want to do gold you could just do whatever art markers you have. Maybe you have Copics or um, some brush markers of some kind, alcohol markers, anything like that you could color in 
just in whatever color you want or just paint in with a solid color of watercolor. It might also look really pretty doing kind of a gradient watercolor, like making it, maybe I'll do another one and I'll have it faded light to dark or something like that would look really pretty. Or doing a drop shadow or something just to accent that. All right, my last little bit, I just wanted to add some little centers to these. Just very carefully gonna dot in a little bit of that. I'm just gonna get some of the violet without the pink mixed in as much. Okay, I want that to be pretty concentrated. I'm gonna wipe off extra and I'm just gonna add a little dots in the center. Just some cute little flowers. All right, I think that would make a really, really pretty card. Or you could scale that up and even make it a little bigger painting and be a really nice gift. So I wonder if you can see the sparkle on that gold. It looks really pretty. If you make this card or any of my other videos, I would really love if you'd share them with me on my Instagram. You can find me there, Mrs. Hand Painted, and tag me in it uh, or use my hashtag Mrs. Hand Painted so I can check out what you've made for my videos because I really, really love to hear that you're enjoying them and you liked making something that I taught you. So please share it with me and I hope you have fun making some pretty watercolor cards for upcoming holidays.